Hey everybody, it is Zach here from the Ad Boys, and welcome to my Get Rich with Mining guide. This guide continues a bit of a series that I've been knocking out, which I started with some Porter Rich bossing guides, but the last few episodes really have been skilling related. Mining does not peak as much GP an hour as a few of the other skills that we've been talking about, but you can still make very solid cash with mining with a few different methods. The toughest part really is getting high enough mining to be able to do any of the good methods, and even when you have high enough level just to start some of these good money making methods, it's always going to be a lot better if you have a very high level of mining to make even even more money. If you have been enjoying these guys or just getting some useful information out of them, be sure to like and subscribe for more content as it does very much help the videos out. Also, if you've been enjoying the content in general, I do stream on Twitch, which should be linked on the screen and in the description, so be sure to follow me on the Twitch side of things. Thank you for the support, everyone. Before we get into mining methods, let's go ahead and talk about some mining items like pickaxes. You have to have a pickaxe to mine, and the level of pickaxe is going to affect your odds of getting an ore while mining. So higher level pickaxes are going to be better. It's always best to upgrade as soon as you can. All of these pickaxes here are tradable, but there's also a pickaxe shop in the Dwarven Mines just under Falador. Uh, this shop does sell bronze through runes pickaxes, which is going to be your best option until 61 mining. And overall, even the rune pickaxe, no matter what, it's a pretty solid option. It's way cheaper than any of the upgrades. At 61 mining, you can use the dragon pickaxe. Uh, this pick is much more expensive than the rune, since it's not that easy to grind out, and it's also used for some high-level PVM gains, as well as being significantly better than mining with a rune pick. Now, when it comes to simply training your mining, the dragon pickaxe is a good boost, but when you're trying to get rich through mining, it really does go a long way to get those bonus mining gains. Plus, the dragon pickaxe has a special attack, which temporarily raises your mining level by three, so you get some bonus speed from that in a few areas. The Crystal Pickaxe is the best pick in the game. It has an even better chance to mine than the Dragon Pickaxe when it is charged. And even when uncharged, it acts like a Dragon Pickaxe. So no matter what, it's at least a Dragon Pickaxe. To get the Crystal Pick, you have to use a Dragon Pickaxe, a Crystal Tool Seed, and 120 Crystal Shards at a Singing Bowl in Pryffindos. So this does require the Song of the Elves quest. Uh, it requires 76 crafting and smithing to make one if you're going to use the Singing Bowl. But if you don't have those levels, you can take 60 more shards to Conwen or Reese. They're both elves that live within the city, and they'll make it for you. You do need 70 attack and 50 agility to wield the Crystal Pickaxe, which really only matters for using the uh, special attack on it, which is the same as the Dragon Pickaxe special. You don't have to wield the Pickaxe to be able to use it, though it does get rid of like that inventory space if you are at least wielding it. And 50 agility is already part of the Song of the Elves requirement, so just 70 attack to wield it. You do need to keep a Crystal Pickaxe charged with Crystal Shards if you want it to be faster than a Dragon Pick, but when it's uncharged, it still is just as fast as the Dragon Pick. So it's worth making one if you have the materials. I wouldn't suggest using a charged pickaxe unless you're doing some of the higher level money makers that we'll be talking about in here. It is worth noting if you're wearing an elven signet, this is a tradable ring that is obtained from catching crystal implings, you're going to use 10% less charges on that crystal pickaxe, so it's highly suggested to invest in that elven signet if you're going to be using a crystal pickaxe. Moving on from pickaxes, we have a couple of other helpful mining items. The celestial ring is obtained from mining shooting stars. This is not supposed to be a shooting star guide, so I'm not going to be going over that, but I do have a shooting star guide which is linked in the description. The ring on its own gives a plus four invisible mining boost, so you're going to get a better chance to mine whenever you're wearing the ring. Also, you can charge the ring with more stardust from shooting stars. A charged ring has one in ten chance to mine double ores up to adamant. The charged ring is really not going to help out with any of the methods that we're talking about here. So if we're getting rich with mining, it's really just that plus four invisible boost, which you don't have to charge it for. You can combine the celestial ring and the elven signet at a singing bowl for a hundred crystal shards and a thousand stardust, so that you can use both the celestial ring and elven signet at the same time if you're using that crystal pickaxe. Lastly, we've got the mining gloves. When wearing mining gloves, you have a chance to not deplete the rock that you're mining when you get ore. So for example, I can mine this rune rock here and you'll see that I get an ore, but instead of the rock just being done, like I can keep mining it for a second ore here. Mining gloves can be obtained from the mining guild. Every time you mine an ore in the mining guild, you have a chance to get some unidentified minerals. Higher tier ores have a better chance to get a mineral, but you can mine iron ore so fast that it's still the best way to get unidentified minerals. It's just a mine a bunch of iron. You can spend these minerals at the Mining Guild Mineral Exchange by talking to Bologna near the bank over here. Uh, she sells mining gloves, a soft clay pack, and bags of gems for those extra minerals. Uh, there's two pairs of mining gloves in the shop. You have the regular mining gloves that cost 60 unidentified minerals. These will work for silver, coal, and gold rocks, which is not super helpful. The superior mining gloves cost 120 identified minerals, which is going to work for mithril, adamant, and rune ore, which is a lot better. The superior gloves will not work on silver, coal, 
and gold, but you can combine the two pairs of gloves by using them on Bologna, and she's going to charge another 60 unidentified minerals. So basically, for 240 minerals, you can get the expert mining gloves, which work for all of the previously mentioned ores. We got silver, coal, gold, adamant, and rune. But also, the expert mining gloves work for amethyst, which is very helpful, and we will be talking about amethyst in this guide. Before you can make a lot of money with mining, you're going to need a decent mining level. I'm going to begin right at level 1 here, because it's usually where you are right off Tutorial Island. At first, you want to complete the Dorix quest. Uh, it's a very fast quest for some pretty early mining XP. To finish the quest, all you have to do is bring Doric 6 clay, 4 copper, and 2 iron ore, which costs about 1k on the Grand Exchange. If you don't have any coins at all yet, you could just grab coins from the first floor of the Stronghold of Security. You could even hop worlds at the GE until you find somebody making fires. Just pick up the ashes. You'll have to sell like 10 ashes to make 1k. Uh, Doric is just north of Falador. Go ahead and bring him his ores, and you'll jump from 1 to 10 mining immediately. I do suggest knocking out the Plague City quest for some mining XP. This is not meant to be a quest guide, even though we basically went over the full Dorix quest. Now, I will point you to the OSRS Wiki's quest guide, which is what I use for questing, but also I do vouch for Slayer Music's video guides here on YouTube. Doing Plague City is going to jump you from 10 to 18 mining, so if you don't want to do Plague City, you could just grab a pickaxe, home port to Lumbridge, run south to the mines, and mine some copper or tin. It doesn't matter which of those you mine, because the XP for each of them is the same. Also, make sure to just drop whatever you're mining for right now. You don't need to bother banking just a few copper and tin ore, you want to do it to at least 15 mining. Whether you did Plague City or not, you're now sitting at 15, maybe 18 mining. Iron ore is going to be your next bet all the way to level 30 mining, which is where we're going to start making a little bit of money. There are a ton of iron rocks in the game, and you don't really need like a solid three rocks at low levels because you're going to be mining them pretty slowly anyway. Uh, I like the mines south of Varrock, this one being southeast of Varrock. Same as you did with copper and tin ore, you just want to drop the iron here. It's going to be too slow to be worth banking at the moment. Your goal is to get a good mining level level, then make money with better methods. You should mine ore to at least 30 mining, but mining ore is also some of the best XP that you're going to get, even at higher levels. So, for the most efficient money making gains, you do want to mine iron until like 70 plus, but that is a lot of iron mining, so we'll list off some money makers before that, but if you enjoy your iron mining, just keep at it for a while. At level 30, you can start to do the motherload mine. It is a bit slow at first, but you can get multiple ores per rock, so it's not nearly as click intensive as other mining methods. The motherload mine is located in the Dwarven Mine under Falador. You should currently be watching my character walk their way from East Falador Bank over to the Motherload Mine. Motherload Mine is a bit more interesting than regular mining methods, but it's still very easy and chill to do. You mine pay dirt from these veins around the mine, and then you take that pay dirt over to the hopper, where it's going to bring it down this waterway and turn it into some ores. If the wheels are broken on the west side of the waterway, you need to fix them with a hammer. You can easily find a hammer in this crate, and there's actually a second crate with a hammer nearby too, and it only takes a second to fix the wheel whenever you need it. When you take ores out of the sack at the end of the waterway, you can get a variety of ores depending on your mining level. So right at 30 mining, you're only going to get coal, but at 55 mining, you unlock mithril ore, 70 mining, you start getting addy ore, and you can even get rune ore once you're at 85 mining, which is pretty solid. Also, when you get the higher tier ores, you do get bonus XP, so the XP rates end up being pretty solid at higher levels compared to right at 30. It's really not a bad option to stay back at iron ore until you're 55 mining, so you get at least mithril ore, and you'll be making a little bit more money out of pay dirt. But starting right at 30 mining and motherload mine's pretty chill too. You also get some golden nuggets while you're in the motherload mine. These can be spent on a variety of things at Prospector Percy. Uh, you can unlock the upper floor of the mines. You can increase the size of the ore sack so you don't have to bank as often. You can get your coal bag, which is huge if you recently watched my Get Rich with Smithing guide. You got the gem bag, which holds uncut gems. You can get Prospector gear, which gives you bonus mining XP while you're wearing it. And then, of course, the soft clay packs and the bags of gems once you've really cleaned out the rest of the rewards. Most of these rewards really don't give any extra GP an hour until maybe you're buying some soft clay pouches, but even then, it's like 1k per golden nugget. And the Motherload Mine doesn't max out at a ton of GP an hour, but it's always solid XP, and it makes for a good low-intensity way to train your mining levels while still profiting. At level 40 mining, you can start to mine gemstones, but as with most mining methods, it's pretty slow right at level 40, plus you're only one level away from a rune pack axe, you might as well get 41. And at 52 mining, that's one of the requirements for the hard Karamja diaries. If you do those diaries, you unlock a larger gem mine, so 52 mining is not a bad place to start with these gemstones. Uh, if you find that it's too slow, you could always go back to power mining some iron before you head over to gem rocks. The gem rocks are located in the Shiloh village, in the northwest portion of the village. This does mean that you need to complete Shiloh Village to even enter like the upper section. Uh, you can mine gem rocks from here and then just hop worlds to try to make some profit, but it's a lot better if you get those hard Karamja diaries done and unlock the underground area. This does add a lot of requirements, 
But diaries make for a good goal setter if you're ever unsure what to work on. Uh, make sure that you're wearing a charged amulet of glory while you mine gemstones. Whether you're using the upper or the lower level, your gem rock mining will go a lot faster if you're wearing a charged amulet of glory. It's useless to do this without that charged glory. At low levels and only using the upper floor, you're going to manage 300 to 350 gems an hour. Uh, the average GP per gem is about 645 coins currently. That would be 190k to 220k GP an hour and hovering around 20k XP for mining. Uh, once you get to the higher levels and you're using that lower floor, the actual big gem rock mine, you can get 800 to 1,000 gems an hour. You can even three tick these rocks for even more GP and XP, but that's really intense. So we're looking at 800 to 1,000 gems an hour. That'd be 516k to 645k GP per hour and 52k to 65k XP. Gem rocks can be a very solid training method for like 70 to 80 plus mining because you're going to start to get pretty solid XP rates and you make good cash compared to a lot of other methods at these levels. Next, we have a mining method that was already solid in the past, but it got a bit of a jump thanks to the Phantom Muspa. We're talking about basalt mining. I guess when you look at the price increase from when the Muspa came out to right now, the initial jump in the price of basalt has really died back down. But Jagex adding another reason to use salts in any way does help them stay reasonably priced to try to make money off of them. To mine basalt, you need 72 mining, and you have to complete the Making Friends With My Arm quest, which has a couple of added requirements, like 68 agility. The mine is located on Weiss, which you can use icy basalt to get there, and if you do the quest, like, you have to travel there during the quest, so you should see how to get there pretty easily. The basalt can be combined with T salts, earth salts, and F salts to make a couple of convenient teleports, like that icy basalt we were talking about. But just mining the regular basalt is the best way to go because it's the most expensive piece here. Basalt deposits are similar to motherload mine spots where you get a couple of basalt per rock before it depletes. Plus these basalt rocks respawn very quickly. So it's almost not even worth running to a different rock when yours runs out of ore. When you fill up an inventory of basalt, you don't need to bank since you can just run upstairs and use them on Snowflake, the troll outside, and she will note your basalt for you. Most of mining life tends to not be AFK, but this method has a little bit of an AFK factor similar to motherload mine like I was saying before you can't really click one basalt and then like walk away from your computer but you can very easily multitask while making money with the basalt whether you like to dual log and do something more click intensive on a second account or maybe you're just trying to watch some of my other videos while you make some gains you can multitask basalt pretty easily depending on your mining level and what pickaxe you're using you can mine anywhere from 600 to 850 basalt an hour maybe closing in on 900 with that crystal pick in a solid hour I personally just use the dragon pick here not using those crystal shards Basalt is about 1k a piece at the moment, which puts us at 600k to 850k GP an hour while mining basalt. Very solid money making for not a lot of attention. Also, pretty much no mining XP. You get like 3 to 4k mining XP an hour. So you're not here to train, you're just here for cash. While we're in the basalt mines, let's talk about the new mining method that was added with the Phantom Muspa. If you have completed the Secrets of the North quest, you have access to these Muspa caves. And if you walk just past where you actually enter the fight, now, there's a few mining spots where you can mine Ancient Essence. This requires 75 mining to get started, but your speed will nearly double by the time you get 99 mining. So as always, the higher mining, the better. Mining these rocks is similar to mining Day Alt Essence. There are three crystals in the little alcove, and only one of them is active at a time. The active crystal changes every minute, maybe minute and a half, so it's not based on how many essence you mined out of it. There's kind of a consistent timer to it, which makes it actually pretty AFK. You can get 1,000 to 2,500 essence an hour, depending on your mining level and your other mining boosts. Uh, the Ancient Essence is currently about 133 coins apiece, which puts this method at 133k to 332k GP an hour profit. The XP is also pretty weak, you get under 10k XP an hour, but it's really not that bad profit at the moment for how AFK it is, and if you're looking to grind out some Essence to upgrade your imbued heart, then this is not a bad way to do it if you're not set up to fight the Muspa boss. Next up, we have the Blast Mine. To do Blast Mining, you need 43 mining and 100% Lovacane favor, but to actually start making solid money, you're going to want to have 75 mining while you're in here. In the Blast Mine, you start to get the higher tier ores 10 levels sooner than you would normally unlock them, so at 75 mining, you can get Rune Ores. Blast Mining is a little bit more complicated than other mining methods, but after a run or two, you get it down pretty quickly. You're going to need a chisel, a tinderbox, and some dynamite. The spot that I'm using here is on the northeast side of the mine. To get some blasted ore, you need to chisel a hole in the wall, then place dynamite, then light the dynamite. In a few ticks, that'll blow up, causing damage to you if you're standing too close, but it'll leave some blasted ore on the ground, which you can put into the ore sack. There's a couple of spots where you can efficiently blast six dynamite at a time before putting your ore into the sack. If you wait too long to put 
put blasted ores into the sack, then they will disintegrate. So I just run the six at a time. In the spot that I'm using for these first two dynamite, I dig it out, I place the dynamite, and then I light both of them at the same time, instead of lighting one and then starting the other, and then run over to the east wall. From here, just light the dynamite right away and kind of zigzag for the last four ores leaving them all on the ground until I blow up each spot and then just pick up all six ores, put them in the sack, and repeat. There are a couple of spots in the blast mine that you can get six dynamite off before your ores start to disintegrate, but this is the spot that I currently use. Uh, you collect your noted ores from the dwarf over here, which is going to give you a big XP drop too. So since you get noted ores and all that XP at once, you can collect like a lot of ores at once and get a huge XP drop after a few hours. Uh, you can get a little over 300 dynamite an hour blown up, which is pretty good for mining XP and makes decent profit. You're actually pushing 75k to 80k mining XP an hour, which is very solid, but the GP an hour is like 250 to 300 Okay, and maybe a little more if you're getting lucky on Rune Ore. For the most part, this is a good training method that adds a little bit of profit though, so let's move on. Now we have a pretty classic mining moneymaker, Rune Ore Mining. You need 85 mining to mine Rune Ore, but of course higher mining is going to help you mine those ores faster. Rune mining can be a bit of a crapshoot. The main thing that you got to do is just find rocks that have some ore available. There are a few places in the game that you can mine rune, the top places being the Mining Guild or the Treyhern Mine in Prifendos, which does require Song of the Elves. The spot that I'm using in these clips is that Treyhern Mine. Even with four spots in this mine, there's a lot of other players and some bots who are trying to grind out rune ore, so the process is mostly just hopping worlds and looking for ores. If you do find a rock and then you mine the ore out of it, it takes 12 minutes to respawn that ore, except in the mining guild, all of those times are cut in half, so remember the mining guild, you only have six minutes in between ores. Uh, you can take note of when you mine the ore and then hop back to that world in 12 minutes or six in the mining guild, and you can be there right when the ore spawns back if you're really paying attention. Once you get a few worlds where you have a good idea Idea of when the ores are coming back then you can consistently log into worlds with available ores either way you're still always battling other players and bots so having a higher mining level and using better pickaxes even the crystal pick is gonna make a big difference in the amount of ores you get per hour rune ore is a little more than 11k a piece at the moment and it's not really gonna see a significant decrease in price because rune items all alk like pretty much rune items are all at alk price so rune ores aren't getting any cheaper with just a few envies an hour, you can push a little over one mil per hour while mining rune. It's not very AFK, though the rocks sometimes take a while to mine, but rune ore can peak at like the highest profit here if you're getting lucky with those rocks. Next, I want to talk about our highest level method on the list, amethyst mining. Amethyst rocks require 92 mining. It's one of the highest level requirements in the game, actually. Not a lot of things require 90 plus in a skill to even get started. Amethyst is located in the mining guild, which is in the dwarven mines under Falador, very close to the motherload mine. Even at 99 mining with max mining stuff, you're not really going to get more than like 100 amethyst an hour. And that'd be some fast amethyst mining getting up to 100. So 70 to 80 amethyst is a solid haul per hour. And that would currently get you 280 to 320 kg GP an hour. I'd say you're maxing out 350k to 375k GP an hour. Amethyst ore can be kind of AFK. You only get one ore per rock, but it takes so long to mine it that it's not very click intensive. And if you have those expert mining gloves, occasionally you mine the ore without depleting the rock, making it even more AFK. You still can't really walk away from the computer necessarily, but it is very easy to multitask some amethyst for uh, some weak mining XP, but some solid GP gains for no effort. Zulcano is the last one we've got on the list here. I definitely saved the best for last though. Zulcano is the most enjoyable way to make money with mining. Plus, it tends to add up to be the best of any of these methods for GP an hour. Unless maybe you got some good luck at those rune ores with no bots taking any of them. Zulcano is a skilling boss located in the Elven city of Prifendos, which means that you have to complete the Song of the Elves quest to do Zulcano, which is a fairly steep requirement. This is not meant to be a Zulcano guide, but I do have a full Zulcano guide, which is linked in the description. Zulcano will get you XP in mining, smithing, and rune crafting, actually. But the smithing and the rune crafting XP is pretty negligible. Uh, it's similar to getting mining and crafting XP while you do Zaya rune crafting. If you spend a lot of time there, eventually it adds up to some nice bonus gains, but you're mostly getting mining XP here. You still don't get that much mining XP, though. Zulcano is not used for training mining levels as much as Winter Todd is used for fire making or Temporos is used for fishing. You get like 15k mining XP an hour, which is all right. But the big benefit here is the profit, which is very fitting for a Get Rich With Mining video. Zulcano drops a lot of ores, bars, gems, and runes, which tends to add up to a little over a mil an hour when you get going. Zulcano also has a couple of uniques, which adds a little bit of spice every time you get a drop. 
You have a rare chance to get a Crystal Tool Seed, a Zolcano Shard, or even an Uncut Onyx for some bonus profits. The Zolcano Shard is pretty cheap, to be fair. There's also a Zolcano Pet, which is pretty cool. Even though any other mining could get you the Mining Pet, in general, that Rock Golem is very rare. Not that the Zolcano Pet isn't rare, but it's not as ridiculous to get. You do get some Crystal Shards while you fight Zolcano. You'll get one Shard if you've at least participated in the fight. You get two Shards if you do enough damage to have a chance for Unique. And if you're the MVP of the fight, you get three Crystal Shards, plus you're the only one to get Infernal Ashes if you're the MVP. So it's pretty easy to tell if you're the best or not. Since you are getting Crystal Shards just while you're doing this, I do usually use my Crystal Pickaxe at Zolcano. Zolcano is the most enjoyable and most profitable method on this list. So for the most part, if you want to make good money with mining, I would just lean Zolcano gains. I believe that's everything I wanted to talk about when it comes to getting rich with mining, everyone. As you can see, the money making per hour for mining doesn't max out quite as high as some of the other skills like room crafting and thieving, but there are a variety of methods that can be used to make solid cash while mining. If you have any questions about money making with mining, let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I do stream on Twitch, which should be linked on the screen and in the description. I also have a Discord channel, which should be linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching this mining money making guide, everybody, and best of luck with your money making gains.